Hey friends, this is Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead and I know I said I wasn't going to do apples this year, but guess what? I got a great deal on a bushel of honey crisp. Now, no, they're not deer apples, but they're the best apples for canning that I know of. And the whole bushel was only $20. So let's get peeling. Okay, so here's our star fruit apple peeler. Here is my dish pan of lemon water. And here is my stock pot that I'm going to cook down the cores and peels in for jelly. Because honest to God, $20 a bushel, you bet I'm making jelly with the cores and the peels, okay? Down in the bucket is my washed apples. That's the bucket they're being washed in because I am going to be cooking the peels and the cores for jelly, so I want them to be clean. So they've gone from the bushel into the wash water and then they're going to get peeled and be divided between the lemon water and the stock pot for jelly. Putting your apple on the prongs. Don't put it blossom side on the prongs. Why? That's the weakest part of your apple and if your apple is any, any, in any way, shape or form slightly soft, it'll just spin right on there. Always put it on the stem, the stem side on the prongs because that's the this is designed by nature to be strong, to hold the weight of the apple on the tree. So we're just gonna go bang, like that. I think I'm gonna have to get my little cutting board to stick this to. I miss my old clamp to the table one, but see, beautiful job. Into the stock pot. Pull this off. And boom. Apples in here. Oh, Gracie smells apples. Does you want a piece of apple? There you go. Oh, there you go. Don't ask me for any more. And this all is going to go in the stock pot. All right, I'm putting a towel under this because this is going to get wet real quick. I, I wasn't going to do apples, but I could not resist a bushel of honey crisps into the pot. None of this is going to waste, so don't be don't freak out if you see me trim a little bit too much off the apple. God, I love it. Mm. Oh my God, best apples hands down. I have this dish pan full and I mean it's a big dish pan and I'm just going to put this lid like this and have Papa set it out in the porch for tomorrow for canning. Now I'm going to work on dehydrating. Now I'm going to start I'm going to leave some of the nicest ones just for daily eating because I eat a lot of apples or I did and apples are one of the reasons why I was starting to lose more weight because I was eating like three of them a day and that seems to keep everything moving. Now what I'm going to do instead of, we've got all our apples ready for our um, simple syrup. I don't make too many of those. And I have broken my chop wizard. So I'm just going to cut these into pieces that are the right size for dehydrating. At least the apple slicer does half the job for me, right? And as soon as I get enough for a tray, they'll go straight onto the dehydrator tray. So, now this is old lemon juice. I didn't realize it gets silty on the bottom. But being lemon juice, it really shouldn't have an expiry date. Mm, and it doesn't. I like making um, steel cut oatmeal with raisins in the morning, but I'll tell you something. Dried apples would be just as beautiful, or maybe even nicer to add with the raisins. Okay, I'm, fi I'm filling up a big bowl of eating apples because she... I gotta eat some of these. I didn't pay 20 bucks for a bushel not to eat them fresh. But I have four trays here for the dehydrator. 
This pot is going on the stove with some water in it to make jelly. And we're going to make some apples in simple syrup. Now I spent $20 on this bushel apple, so you know I'm going to get every penny out of it that I can. This alone at the grocery store would have cost about $8. Here's our simple syrup bubbling away. This is a medium weight, which is roughly equates to six cups of water, maybe seven cups of water to four cups sugar. Here's our water that we're going to blanch our apples in as soon as this comes to a boil. We're going to put our apples in there and blanch them for three minutes. And our jars have been washed, rinsed, and are sitting in hot simmering water waiting. And so are our lids. Our blanching water is boiling and we are going to very carefully drop our apples into the blanching water. And I'm going to put this lid on here and I'm going to set the timer for three minutes. Once these have blanched for three minutes, I will strain them and then I'll rinse them under cold water to stop them to, from cooking any further. Okay, our timer has gone off. And I'm just going to take these over to the sink and strain them. Move our canner over. Okay, so here's our apples. These are not below, completely below the water, but they will be once they're filled with apples. This is just a pressure canner. But I'm using it as a boil bath canner, which means we're not going to tighten the lid on it or pressurize it in any way. We're just going to use this as a boil bath canner. As you can see, there's a, a rack in the bottom, and I've added a couple of ounces of vinegar, white vinegar, to stop the jars from clouding up. And there is our simple syrup. I put, you can see the small stick of cinnamon floating on top. I kind of seasoned it a little bit. So let's get going. Okay, I just want to show you that when I take a jar out of the canner, there is a right way and a wrong way. You don't want to lift the jars this way. The water will run down and burn your hand. You want to lift them this way so that the water falls down through. Like so. And then you just lean this on here, just like that. See how it goes down through here and not runs down on the line along the edge. I'm only making a few jars of apples in simple syrup because we don't eat a lot of pies. The only time I seem to make pies, you know what I did wrong here, folks? I should have put some simple syrup in there first. When you have big clunky things in your jars like this, you really should put some of the syrup in first. It makes debubbling go so much simpler. Let's take our cinnamon stick out of there. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. I now have to go down through all of these and make sure there is no bubbles. Always, always, always. From one inch to the top, fruit and syrup, always wipe your rims and your rings, your rims and your threads. Put a new clean washed and rinsed lid on and on goes the ring and into the canner this goes. All right, here's another jar. This is what I meant. I should have put a cup of syrup into the bottom and then it debubbles for us as we go up. See how the syrup gets pushed out, pushed up from the bottom? Then you only have to add syrup in the top because it debubbled as you put the apples in. Always, always, always. Then into the canner that goes. Okay, I ran out of simple syrup, so I have to cook some more. So right now, I've got four 
quarts of apples and simple syrup and we're going to set the timer and we're just going to let these boil for 20 minutes. Always make sure the water is one to two inches above your jar lids. Here's our cores and peels in the stock pot to be made into jelly. And I got four trays on the dehydrator. I'm still going. Okay, so here are all my peels and cores that I cooked. And I've just put them in a strainer with a piece of gink, clean gingham. I rinsed it out. And I'm just letting this drip. Don't squeeze the bag or your gel, your juice will go cloudy. And we want nice, clear apple jelly. Okay, so here are two half gallon or one full gallon of my, at the juice I got from cooking down the cores and the peels. And once I strained it, I simmered that together in the stock pot with a stick of cinnamon. So it's just gently flavored. What you're going to need is an equal amount of sugar. Now remember the golden rule of making jelly. No more than six cups of sugar to six cups of juice at one time. So we're going to play it safe and I, this is going to be done in four batches. Okay, we got a heavy bottom, a heavy bottom saucepan and I'm just going to pour half. Oh, look at that beautiful color. I'm going to pour half in, which is about five cups because these jars are, I filled them right to the top. This is one of the reasons when you've got a lot of juice, it's nice to measure, pre-measure things out in these half gallon jars because it makes the measuring so much easier. And we're just going to bring this up to a boil and cook it till it sheets from the spoon. It looks like I'm only going to get two pints at a time. So once these go in the canner, they're only going to have to go in there for like 10 minutes because the jars are hot. In reality, I've never seen any of my past relatives actually, actually boil bath jam or jelly. Be really careful, folks. If you spill this, you'll be scarred for life. Okay, we have a little bit left in the bottom, and of course that's going to go into the jelly jar. Oh, I overfilled it again. What is the matter with me? I'm just real tired, folks. It's been a rough uh, couple of years on me. All right, clean damp paper towel. You wipe your rims and your rings, especially if you had to pour some out. Never grab the jar with your hand. It's very, very hot. Put your lid on and into the canner. That goes. And these are going to be canned for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then uh, when I have them all done and all out of the canner, we'll be back. Okay, here's what I got. I got two, four, six, eight, nine pints, a half pint and a quarter pint of jelly. I got six quart jars of apples and simple syrup and two and I mean they're they're so pushed up against the lid two half gallon jars full of dehydrated apples gallon of dehydrated apples did I mention their honey crisp seven jars of apples in simple syrup did I mention their honey crisp and nine pints a half pint and a quarter pint almost ten pints of jelly this is the Mrs. Volvi from our Half Acre Homestead saying, if you can get all of this for $20, I'll eat my hat. Just because something is cheap does not always make it a good deal. When you find something really good quality at a really good price, bang, that is also home economics. Take care. God bless God. I wish my swimming pool was still full.